Good morning, everyone. Let's shake this chapter up a bit and take a break from the boring stuff like the blocks and the ramps and whatnot and try out something that's a little bit more exciting. Here's a problem that wants us to determine the minimum speed and imparted kinetic energy of a massive asteroid crashing into the Earth. We weren't provided with any equation for the force of gravity here, so we'll have to come up with a new trick in order to get one. The first sentence of the problem description tells us that the gravitational force of the Earth on some outside object, like the asteroid, is inversely proportional to the square of the distance from the center of the Earth. There's something missing here, though. If r is the distance measured from the center of the Earth outward, well, that means that as the asteroid gets pulled in, it's actually moving along the opposite direction, towards negative r. To account for this attraction towards the Earth, we'll have to incorporate a negative sign in the proportionality, like this. Now, this relation is helpful, but it's not enough on its own. We've seen how forces have the units of newtons, and on the right here, we currently have 1 over meters squared. Clearly, something is missing there. Here's how we'll deal with that situation. Let's create an equation out of this and include a placeholder variable for the stuff that's currently missing. You can use whatever letter that you like, but I've chosen a capital C to represent some proportionality constant that we need. To figure out what that constant is, we can use the clue given to us in the second sentence. It says that at the surface, the gravitational force from the Earth on some object is just mg, right? So that belongs here on the left. If we relate what that's saying to the rest of this equation that we're trying to create, well, that means that the r in the denominator on the right should be the radius of the Earth in order to make this true. If we multiply both sides by the square of the radius of the Earth, as well as negative 1, we can isolate that constant and see exactly what it's equal to. That is what we need to plug into our previous equation. And with that ready, we can use our work in energy concepts to solve the problem. First, we'll need to grab the generalized integral definition for the work done on the asteroid by the gravitational force of the Earth. We don't need this full force vector here, since the gravitational force of the Earth only acts along a one-dimensional line towards the asteroid, and that's along r. So let's go ahead and replace that. That means we don't need an infinitesimal displacement vector for multiple directions either. We can just use a non-vector infinitesimal displacement along r, which is just dr. For the endpoints, we'll use the starting position of infinity to represent a great distance away that the asteroid starts from. And the final position will be at the surface of the Earth on its radius, like this. The negative sign can be factored out, as well as the constants in the numerator. When we integrate 1 over r squared, we can use the power rule for integration because this expression here is equivalent to r to the negative 2 power. And when we do that, we'll get the following result. When we evaluate at the endpoints, thankfully this negative 1 over infinity portion will just go to 0. And that just leaves us with negative 1 over the radius of the Earth multiplied by all the constant stuff that we factored out earlier. When we multiply, the negatives disappear, and we're left with just mg 
times the radius of the Earth. Now that we know the net work done by the Earth's gravitational force on the asteroid, let's try and use the work energy theorem to get the impact speed. When the asteroid is a great distance away, it will have an initial speed of zero. So that means that the net work expression that we just solved for, mg times the radius of the Earth, that'll be equal to one-half times m times v final squared. If we multiply both sides of this expression by two, divide out the masses, and then take the square root of both sides, we can get an expression for the speed of the asteroid on impact. Go ahead and plug in the numbers, and you should get a value similar to this on your calculator. The smallest number of significant figures in our multiplication here is 2 within this 9.8 chunk for gravity, or the acceleration due to gravity, excuse me. So we'll have to chop our answer down to two significant figures, which reduces to 11,000 meters per second. And so this portion is now done. Finally, on to the uh, imparted energy to the Earth. We saw earlier that the kinetic energy, the 1 half mv final squared, that was equal to this mg times the radius of the Earth quantity. So all we need to do here is just multiply these numbers together. And here's what I get out of my calculator. Now, a quick word of warning here. For some reason, the official solution to this problem stops here and reports the answer to the incorrect number of significant figures. This might be the case as well if you're doing this in an online homework like Mastering Physics or something. Do not be deceived by this mistake. The official rules for significant figure multiplication very clearly say that this answer is wrong. If we take a value with one significant figure and multiply it by values with two significant figures and four significant figures, the end result can only have one significant figure, not three. So this down here below is the real answer, despite what your book or otherwise might say. That's all for this problem. Thanks for watching, everybody. Take care.